Well, there's a lot of denim on that side of the table right now. Oh, yeah. A lot there of denim, more. a lot of mullet. I uh, <laughs> had a hard time um, deciding tonight between between hats because I went back. Are we at, yeah. are we recording right now? Mm-hmm. We're recording right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Well. Might as well bring in the intro. Welcome back to another episode of On Tap with the Boys. We're back here again with another phenomenal guest, repeat guest. Um, we had a great time last time. Episode 64 was incredible, and he's back here again. CPS Dave. Glad to be back. This place is awesome. I love the new studio. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. It's came a long ways. A lot of upgrades. A yeah. lot of upgrades in this place. Well, you should have seen this place when we first got here. As you can tell, shoot for the stars. This was a nursery when we got here. <laughs> and go. we just... It, it actually... It was surprisingly easy to change a nursery into a bar scene. Yeah, it was. It was like, man, I should do this in my house. You, know? you just need to lay some brick, dude. Yeah, and all of a sudden you're at the bar. Some f- couple a couple boards of fake brick, and you're there. So it's incredible. We're here again, but but yes, uh, on my way here, I had a hard time because I listened to the last episode, and we were talking about hats and stuff, and I told you about how I love my hats, and I had a hard time picking between. I got the denim pants on. I got the denim shirt on. I was going to rip my, my denim Chevy hat, and then I passed upon the cord. I've never wore this hat yet. I'm like, this is the time to break it out. This is the one. It is a good time. That's it a is. Butler Trailer Manufacturing Company. Idaho. Yeah. Shout out Evan That's King. A great hat. Yeah, we had a listener gave me uh, uh, 75 hats, and I went through all of them because he, he, they know that I like the... I like the old hats. So he gave me 75 hats from somebody, was throwing them away. I went through all of them, and I ended up only throwing 15 away. So I was left with 60 good freaking hats, and this was one of them. And Unbelievable. Beautiful. It would match your fucking corduroy shirt perfectly. Yeah, it would, actually. Oh, my God. It's an OG. I didn't notice you wearing corduroy. I like it, yeah. buddy. Wild Wings of Onika got to represent. Yeah, so <laughs> welcome to the fashion fucking part of the episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no. So, Dave, as I was on my way over here today, my wife says to me, are you interviewing that butthole guy today? <laughs> so, <laughs> so it made me think to myself, like, Obviously, you've been in the spotlight as a creator in the in the um, fashion industry. I sh- I should say, yeah. of the beer drinker community. Yeah, I'm sure you've garnished plenty of cool nicknames. Mm-hmm. Can, um, what are some of those? Well, what's the, like your favorite ones? I actually I get the butthole guy a lot <laughs> <laughs> for different reasons and than just ev- the hats. And everyone wants to know how many I see. I don't know. I'm not keeping track. Um, not nearly <laughs> enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more. We need to see more butthole. That's all, that's all <laughs> yeah. we know. We, got, we well, we still got one of those hats right above Tyler over I here. I think it's autographed by him, actually. Yeah, it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. the OG. Yeah. So, how many buttholes have you seen? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not. I don't. I try not to keep track. You know, the buttholes. <laughs> kind of, it's kind of like looking at the sun. If you stare too long, you get brown spots in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> get you stained. Get stained. I was thinking more so like. Uh, People associating you with the merch or with the content, do you get any names like other than the butthole uh, guy? I'm trying to think. The I'm squirter trying. guy? No, no, the butthole guy is the one because that, <laughs> that's the hat that for some reason just gets all the attention. Is it still one of like the best-selling pieces of merch that you uh, think that you've ever had? By far, everything else is pennies compared to that one. That's crazy. Dude, it's such a statement. And I've know? been meaning I want to bring it up because I am fucking pissed for you. I am I am mad yeah. for you, Dave, because there is so many companies ripping off mm. "Show Me Your Butthole," and it every time I that. see it, I'm like, that is fucked up. Like, and, and, and they look like shit too. And I'm gonna lay this out on the table right now. It's not like those are the words that were uttered out of my mouth. It was spray painted on a sheet of plywood, and that's where I yeah. got it from. But I've been I've been doing that format with that font since 2015, 2017. And now there are so many companies that have either oh, yeah. the exact colors and font that I use, mm-hmm. ripping it off 100%, or watered-down versions that are very similar, but they've made a color Terrible. change, or they use the word your instead of that, which I think pulls away from it, too, because it's not just a celebration. It's not just an excitement. <laughs> it's directed at somebody <laughs> yeah. now, and it's just different. 100%. It's received different. No, that's it true. Because, like, you know, you're just saying that butthole. I'm not asking for you to show me yours. I'm just looking for a butthole. I, uh... I seen one the other day, and it was so. You're talking about watered down. It was so bad. Not a butthole. Oh, a hat. A hat. A I wish I'd seen oh, a butthole. I was like, what? <laughs> what? You did, really? I've, I've seen much. this butthole. <laughs> I've seen a uh, huge lack of buttholes lately, actually. But uh, no, I seen one of the show me your butthole hats the other day. Not that yours. butthole. And it was so. Uh, it was just like embroidered onto a fucking Richardson 112. Oh, this was a and copycat one. It was mm. so bad because it. 
I feel like the whole statement of maybe it's because when you created it, it was on a patch on an older hat, and that's the vibe. But I feel like the whole saying of show me your butthole belongs that. on a patch. Show me that butthole mm. belongs on <laughs> a patch. There's a big difference. I'd, <laughs> we just went over it. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I love the patches. You know, it's it actually is kind of simpler to put on a hat because it's just one piece that you would sew all the way around in a square. Mm-hmm. You know, right. It's less complex, but I think that the look of it is just gorgeous. And it I think is. It, I think it's a better look. Chef's kiss. I think, like, as as a graphic designer, what amazes me the most is, like, the the symmetry of the words, of the font, of the space it takes up on the hat. Like, it just works so well. It looks so natural. And when you see people out, it like, it's supposed... I think that's maybe what makes it work so well. It's supposed to be super off-putting, but it's like, wow, that actually looks pretty normal. Clean. But then you realize, like, okay, it's talking about a butthole. Yeah. You know, I don't I know that. how to explain it. It's just an instant <laughs> classic. It's one of those things like you wouldn't know it until you do it. And then it's right. there. Right. Because I, it's not like I just thought it was a great idea. I was looking at the feedback from my analytics. Right. And it was always getting a lot of hits, a lot of screenshots, a lot of comments. And it just worked. And it kind of helps that it's like a childish word. It isn't, <laughs> yeah. it isn't vulgar yeah. or gross. Right. It's actually silly and childish. So it really walks that line well. Right. Right. It's like, um, it's like I you want to look away, but you can't kind of thing. <laughs> That's like what it is. And I get looked at and discussed sometimes by people that just don't think that it's appropriate whatsoever. Oh, and I, I it's bet. not appropriate whatsoever. That's what's so wonderful about it. Now, when you're out doing these shows, like going to Sturgis, like going to bike week, are you ever approached by people that are like, you should be ashamed of yourself. Like this is, <sighs> no, this is well, terrible. When I go to those environments, those are my people. I right. was gonna say yeah. the Sturgis, dude. That's I right <laughs> up but, that alley. but I was just thinking, there's got to be some random people that are just disgusted with. I it. feel like Butthole Central would be Sur- Sturgis. Like yeah. that's the place yeah. to those, see butthole. No, that's a the, good point. Those are the butthole people. <laughs> 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 that's the butthole culture out yeah. there. But sorry, yeah. Do you ever get disgusted? Uh, like. By your, by your own butthole? Sorry. Sorry, do you ever get people in disgust from it? I don't, I well, can't see it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you ever been approached by like a Karen or anything? That's like I get people oh that God. want me to drop them, and I'm like, nah, that ain't, you drop them, not me. <laughs> okay. Mm. That's not oh, how Oh, they works. give you the old, no, show me my, yours, huh? Mine's, my butthole's sacred. Yours is worth like a buck at most. <laughs> at mine's most. a $2 bill. It's not in, not in production anymore. This thing is rare. <laughs> so what do you think is the best possible way to push this merch, right? Like from the standpoint of someone who's an up and coming streetwear uh, entrepreneur, what's the best way that you could give advice to someone who wants to start their own streetwear you like know, that? That's a, that's a really good question. And what I've kind of learned, you know, I've been doing the online thing for a while and social media is kind of an advertising form, but really what matters is an audience. So when I do live vendor events and there's a band playing and there's a big bar and we're full of people, I have a big audience there. There's a lot of people getting eyes on my products. So whether it's digital or in person, that's what it's all about is just getting eyes on your items. Whether or not they're going to be super successful, that's another matter. Whether or not they're received well and people love them. But it's all about getting that audience. So I kill it when I'm set up. I did a vendor event at the Showboat, Showboat Saloon in the Wisconsin Dells. Yep. Beautiful place. And it was right where the main flow of traffic was coming in and out. So I was hitting every person nice. that was coming through. So they have to see it as yeah. they're coming in or whether, out. Whether or not they're there for me, they see me in my table as they're passing through. Mm-hmm. It's all yep. about getting that audience. Yeah. Getting the exposure out there. <laughs> so you say that's the most important part, to just pushing the stuff. I would say so, yeah. And whether it's whether it's a TikTok video with a million views or a party with a bar room full of people, you got to get in front of people. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And you know what's a great place to get in front of people? <laughs> October 15th. <laughs> yes, <true. laughs> were, were you, were you waiting for sticks. that? Were you waiting for that? Or? I, I was not, but that was a great segue, Tyler. Yeah, yeah, yeah hey, man. Just so, so happened to be throwing a party. Yes, yeah, so, just so happened. You can get eyes on your merchandise. CPS Dave will be at... Our event on tap in the sticks, October fifteenth, here in Pine City, Minnesota. So if you want to come out and get, are you gonna? You're gonna have show me I'm, your butthole hats, right? I'm definitely gonna have show me that butthole hats. Okay, so <laughs> what I want to ask though is, you have confirmed there's show me your butthole hats. Is there going to be any leather products there? 
I can try to bring a few, but I'm kind of tapped. I've got. I've got some tape measures. Right. <laughs> you just <laughs> shove it in his fucking face. <laughs> <laughs> Weird leverage Make on my side here. throw that fucking Weird bike. leverage on I've my I've got side. some tape measure belt loops. I've got a, okay. I've got a bed roll. I've got a few products, but I've been kind of slammed lately. Um, I'm, I'm restoring some old saddlebags right now, and I don't have a lot of inventory for leather products, but I'll have a few things. Yeah, so here's the deal. You're, you're kind of um, rebranding, and it's funny. I just stumbled upon it. It came upon my TikTok Alma leather and I was watching the video and I'm like is that fucking CPS Dave's van and then I could I'm like that's his voice I'm like is this what he's doing now you know and then I watching more of it and stuff so you are now a part of a leather company right yes CP yeah, uh, yeah. Alma so you leather. just so, how did this come about did you just so, all of a sudden one day were like you know what I want to I want to do some leather work sort of yeah I've I kicked it around for a year before I even stepped foot in the shop but there has been, Alma Leather has been in my hometown, Alma, Wisconsin, since 2004, so 18 years. Okay. And I've been thinking about it. I've been wanting to learn about it, not knowing anything, but my CNC machining background, it's been kind of a natural transition. So I walked in, I said, hey, I'm Dave, and I want to buy you out and learn how to do custom leather goods. And the guy, Larry, has been just amazing. He's patient. I show up, work three, four hours, um, a few days a week. I've been learning a lot. I've been making some of my own stuff. I've been doing jobs for the shop, and I'm just working for free for the learning experience. So you literally came in like that, like, "Hey, I'm Dave. I want to buy you out." Pretty like, much, no shit. Pretty like, much. You didn't have <laughs> yeah. a, you didn't have a relationship with him before that. At Not all, or? really. There's this guy named Drew that's from Alma that's been helping him out, and he's okay. probably I'm I'm 35, and he's probably 60. He's older okay. than me, but he's been helping Larry out for free also, and learning how to do some stuff and cleaning the shop up since COVID. COVID was kind of messed the shop up and so he drove me to go there really he was like yeah you gotta come down and I ran into him a year later and he said the same thing you gotta come down and so I did and and it's been awesome and what really led me to do it was because leather is forever everyone's always going to need belts it's always going to be in style yeah Dude, that's I, should be a next poster up see, on our wall leather can, is forever I can see the rise and fade of my funny hats they're hilarious and people love them but you wear a hat for a while, you have a good laugh, and not everyone wants that laugh to go on forever. They're, they get right. it, they're over it, they donate it, they put it in a garage sale. It has a rise and fade, and I don't know when that is going to rise and fade. Right. Yeah. But, but leather is forever. You always have to kind of adapt with the times and kind of adjust mm-hmm. to it, and mm-hmm. I think that is a phenomenal move for you. I mean, it's obvious that trades and, like, actual craftsmanship is dying. And the leather work, I, I mean, I've been watching your videos – ever since I stumbled upon it a while ago, back in June. And um, it is such a craft. And uh, obviously you've realized that because you show how you have been failing and messing up wallets and shit Mm -hmm. and learning how to do it and everything. And that's, um, I would assume that these things are not cheap. Like that's a lot of work into these things. Especially the time that goes into it. Learning how to do like an edge braid on a wallet, you can have, I had eight hours into my first one and it was just a little pouch that I had made. Damn, and I was learning how to crazy. do it, and, and I screwed some stuff up. I, I sent the braid through some wrong passes, and it screwed it all up, and I had to backtrack, and it, take a long, it takes a long time. Um, I, I, someone donated a buckskin hide, and I was going to make him a wallet, and I was almost down with it. I was trying to do some trimming, and I, like, trimmed right through some of the stitching, and I screwed it up. Oh, I was shit. like, oh, my. And I, I had, like, a nice buck scene all hand-tooled on the cover of the wallet and everything, and then it was just scrap. It's not when you're when you're CNC machining with steel. If you drill a hole in the wrong spot, you can usually just weld it shut and drill a new one. With leather, right. you can't hide it. You have you're to be done. really creative if you want to fix a screw up when you're making leather. So, what's the next move? Are you gonna ha- start having some CPS merch in leather? Probably, if I if I have the man hours to do it, absolutely. Yeah, I don't. It's it's gonna be a perfect addition because it's just another type of merchandise. Right. Well, yeah. I think it's a hundred percent a perfect addition because we've already touched on your style in freaking leather work, like belts and shit. Hundred percent, exactly who you are. I agree. I mean, yeah. I was I was re-listening to our episode last last time, and we touched on it hardcore. But you're such a vibe, and your whole style and everything, fucking leather. Everything is was just perfect. Legendary. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just beautiful. Yeah. So I mean, what am I gonna have to do for a wallet? I mean, do, I'll show you I've, my butthole. And I've <laughs> okay. I'll give you a yeah, can, okay. I, can I see? Yeah. Can I see your this wallet? Is, this is one this that is, I finished. Yeah. So this is. I think I've seen this but, on there. And that's a hand tooled out, outer shell. Okay. So does it? You stamp this first, then, yeah, and so, then you hand tool it. So 
Yeah, there's like just a stamp and a hammer, just like, uh, just man. Yeah. Well, Dave, I I was watching one of the TikToks on Alma Leather, and it was, it was when everyone was out of the office, and it was just you there, and you showed a guy. He had a, a leather pouch that I think you said he made in the seventies. Yeah. And it looked pristine. It didn't. Mm-hmm. I would have never been able to tell. Dude, this thing is this this yeah, is as, fucking crazy. As long shit. as long as I mean, it's taken care of, and it doesn't it. They take a lot of wear. They take a lot of abuse. And leather has a lot of life. And it's amazing. You know, we work with what they call veg tan leather, which is just like your regular old plain tanned hide. And then you add oil to it. And then you add atom wax to it. You dye it a different color. And then it just it really comes to life. Every single process, it just changes. And it comes to life right before your eyes. It's amazing. It's definitely your new passion for sure. Oh, yeah. And right, you're really falling into mm-hmm. it. So, like, is there a certain... Uh, I guess cowhide that you're like into like a certain breed like mm-hmm. I like my Angus I like my freaking heifers you know <laughs> I don't yeah. I don't know I would like to get some Holstein fur on I maybe. think some some Holstein fur would be beautiful Holstein fur on yeah. with the black and white yeah that you ever done gorgeous. anything but with any buffalo hide a little bit but it the stuff we've worked with has just looked like tan leather it's just like oh, a buckskin that you can't really I, tell I was given. Oh um, God, I wanted to touch on this. I think I know what you're going to talk about. I was I was given a, a donation of like three small rows of elephant leather, Dude. which damn, so, which surprised How me. How much does elephant leather go for? Apparently, <laughs> like starting out, a hundred to one hundred and twenty dollars a square foot. Wow. <laughs> when I went Dude. to Sturgis, I stopped at Sturgis Leather right downtown in Sturgis, North South Dakota, and he told me just wait till you're at running your A game because you don't want to screw up elephant leather. Right. But, um. The guy was a taxidermist. It was a client of his, and he worked with it. The guy took what he wanted for his own projects, and then he's like, hey, you you want the rest of this? That's insane. Yeah. Dude. And I don't even know what exactly I'm going to do with it yet. Wallets of some kind. I'm going to make myself a nice cash bag for doing vendor events. Yes. Oh, um, hell yeah, with like a zipper on the top? Yeah. Oh, that'll That's be sweet. It, it, it's, it, it was gorgeous. I mean, elephant leather. Like, how more exotic can you get? And I, so cool. ivory, of Zebra. course, is you can't trade ivory. That's banned, you know, to protect the elephants. Yeah. But I, apparently, the leather is a lot easier to get a hold of, which okay. I guess kind of makes sense. There's a lot of leather on an elephant. Dude, I seen, um, I went to the Renaissance Festival two weeks ago. Those motherfuckers are huge. Dude, the really? elephants are gigantic, man. <laughs> Dude, I, was, yeah. I was blown away. Is that away. the first time you've seen you one just in person? Learned that? I think so. I, I think it might be. It might be the first time I've seen an elephant. Maybe when I was like five or something, like Circus Delay, or, or maybe, where did we go? Maybe in college. Yeah, maybe. Well, yeah, I've seen college. a couple of girls you could call an elephant. But, uh, <laughs> I see, yeah, these elephants over at the Renaissance Festival, I was like, damn. And this one was like sitting all cross legged, just straight chilling, like waiting for this kid to get on her back with a fucking sword and a shield on you. Dude, know? you have you Badass. seen that video that's going viral of. The, the, this guy with his little kid go in an elephant enclosure at the zoo, and he's, like, holding his kid up like Simba, and he's looking Bro. over for a picture. All of a sudden, he looks back. The elephant's charging them. He runs, throws his kid under the fence, oh, jumps dude, under the fence. No <laughs> way. You would swear people forgot about what happened in 2012. Hey, I don't want to. Th- Are you talking swear. about my boy, Hara- yeah, my sweet yeah. prince? I uh, am. Yeah. I am. Legends never die. Legends never die. <laughs> yeah. That's for Harambe right there. It's been, <laughs> shit, dude. Has it been 10 years? Is it really? I think it was 2012, think, wasn't it? 10 fucking years? I don't even know. Oh I, think, I think it since, was since even Zoo. sooner than that. I think it was like 2016. No, nah, I think we were in high school. I'll, Bean Boy, will yeah, you look that up for us? Yo, Jamie, can you search that up? That's like the worst thing to fact check ever, by the way. May 28, 2016. 16? Oh, my God. May 28, 2016. Sam was right. I knew when the moon landing was. I knew when Harambe (laughs) died. I got all the facts stored up here. You do, man. You do. (laughs) (laughs) If there's one thing we know, I'm terrible with, with facts. But, hey, we can just roll with them and not fact check me anymore. As long as you say it with confidence. That's literally what I've been trying to do, but these guys <laughs> fact check me now on everything. I just go and, yeah, it doesn't work. You got to hang do you out have where a- you don't have cell service. Yeah. Yeah, yeah fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> I like that idea. We'd let's go camping. Do you I'll have tell you guys a, stories. A dream, a dream hide that you'd like to work with? A dream hide that I would like to work with? Like a human. Who's that serial killer? Human. Mm. Jeffrey uh, Dahmer, isn't it? No, the, the nipple guy. Ed Gein. Ed Gein. Ed Gein. Was yeah, he the or nipple was it belt? Ted Bundy? I think he had a belt made out of nipples, yeah. Someone he had really. lampshades with nipples, too. Yeah. One of the one of the serial killer was a nipple guy, and they had belt made had, out of nipples. Had, yeah, that's badass. Ed Gein only killed two people. He was more of a grave robber. Oh. He was wasn't dead. he the clown? 
No, 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 no. No, we're getting them all mixed up. Yeah, we're getting them all mixed up. Well, Gene Boy, fact check his ass. No. <laughs> Is he the clown guy? We'll just Ed Gein? We'll mix all their best traits and make a super serial killer. Yeah, yeah. That's what we're, that's what we're doing with true crime nowadays is literally just creating the perfect serial killer. We're just going to take all of the serial killers and just make one superhuman. Dude, that, that could be fucking badass. We throw them in the U.S. military, send them out there, bro. <laughs> oh send them to Russia. Who knows? <laughs> Get him Ukraine will up. be saved in a week. <laughs> Throw it back to World War II a little bit. Get him hopped up on a little meth. Create a, little a bit superhuman meth? serial yeah. killer. Mm. Fuck, dude, Blitzkrieg number two, man, coming in. As Nothing long as wrong with some speed. As long as he's charming. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. so all you got. You got to have that ten, Ted Bundy charm. You got to have the sneakiness of Dahmer. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Dial it back. What's your dream hide to deal with? <laughs> your dream leather. I don't know. Um, I really like fur on stuff. And it would be awesome to learn how to do more with that. Okay. I was out. So I went to the Sturgis Rally, and we went to Aladdin, Montana, which is just like a general store and a little cafe barbecue place. And they had like an antique area upstairs. And then from the stairs, from downstairs to upstairs, was just all furs. Fox, oh, that's fox sweet. and coyote tails, full hides. They even had a whole possum for 40 bucks. They had badgers. Oh, that's cool. They had like... Two, three, four, five hundred dollar full like white fox hides Dang. and shit. That's cool. And I was just like in heaven. I wanted to buy them all, and I didn't buy any because I didn't. I didn't know what I was going to do with them. I was like, right. I just want. I just wanted them all. I had to have them. But what do you now? Does like does the leather industry and the taxidermy industry kind of go hand in hand? Is there a lot of is there a lot of guys in the taxidermy industry that dabble with like making wallets and shit? That's a good question. I don't know if it's. I don't know if taxidermy people are dealing with a lot of tanned leather. Because uh, now, I, granted, I haven't met a lot of leather guys. You and maybe one or two other guys that are I would consider to be uh, leather connoisseurs. But all taxidermists I've met, are, they're fucking weird. I want to say, you're, <laughs> they're you're very my, weird. You're my first. I've been described as a little different. <laughs> yeah, but you're like a sociable different. It's a good you're different. a normal different. It's a good yeah. different. Some yeah. of these taxidermists I've met, fucking weird Dude, guys. Taxidermists yeah. are fucking weird. I'll get behind they're that. Weird guys. Controversial, but we're going to take a statement. And that's a I'll statement. get behind that. I, I think <laughs> I can stand strongly behind that. Statement. Well, I think it goes hand in hand with the whole Dahmer craze right now, where he, you know, he kind of started with taxidermy with his dad, and now he's just, you know, kind of went a little off the off that, the rails. Is that where it started? Well, pretty much they picked up. They would pick up uh, freaking roadkill off the side of the road, and mm. they did taxidermy with him and his dad. Yeah, you got to watch I, for I those people. I don't know anything huh? about. You got to watch for those. People. <laughs> oh yeah, if you're picking anyone, up roadkill. Anyone picking up roadkill, you got to watch out for. Yeah. <laughs> that's, those, that's a good, yeah. point. That's a good the, rule to live by. Those are the overall. people we should be watching. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's actually a really good point. So, I mean, when it comes down to it, what is the difference between? I mean, obviously these guys that are leather guys, quote unquote. They're in the shop. They're working tireless hours on simple things. Like you said, like your first wallet took you like mm -hmm. eight hours to complete. Same with taxidermy. Mm -hmm. These guys got tons of hours. What makes mm -hmm. them weird? Is this like a Mad Hatter's disease kind of scenario or what? I don't know. Maybe they're doing too much like... Uh too much overspray in a small room or something. They're inhaling all their, <laughs> their, I all their lacquers. Everywhere. I think I know what makes it different. Okay. You know, you're creating something beautiful, like a wallet, a, yeah. cr a craft, an art. They're trying to, they're taking a dead animal. They're stripping everything out of the inside of it. And they're trying to make it look alive again and like mm. pose it. And That's like, a good way to lay it out. You know what out. I mean? That's, That's how I feel when I got to edit up clips of, of these fucking guys. <laughs> Try and make them look alive again? <laughs> yeah. I got to take something. I got to strip everything out of it and make it look like it's alive again. Especially when you're on the syrup. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the syrup fucking shit? No. Oh, oh God. The chug, yeah, the syrup. Yeah. Does, yes. <laughs> Um, how, how'd that go? Tell me. Give me, give me ruined my whole weekend. <laughs> oh. Whole fucking. It did weekend. actually. Whole it weekend. did actually. Yeah. He went home Literally. early. Yeah. I told him it was his 21st birthday. We were at the bar and I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm sorry. I have to go it's home. It's Beanboy's like fault. 10 o'clock at night. I'm like, I have to go home. Just I'm made done. you sick. Yeah. The, sick. Like the crash. I, I puked it up <laughs> like trying to just like get rid of it and like be okay. Oh, you but were dead, bro. I, done. he was sitting right done. where you are. I looked over at him. His eyes were rolled back. His p face was pale as fuck. Yeah, dude, like, I was ready to become a wallet at that point, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, skin me, man. What did what did we equate it out to? Dalton did the math on the back of the the serving sizes was like a pound and a half of sugar, and I didn't in, drink half of it in the thing of <laughs> syrup, and he drank <laughs> half of it. So it was, you know, 
I can see how that's that, a lot of sugar. Yeah, it <laughs> is a lot of sugar. It's a lot of sugar. So we did. We've been doing this this segment where it's like top three whatever, and whoever wins their vote for that top three on our Snapchat account is where people vote on. Then they get to tell everyone to do whatever. So we had Caroline and Travis on, and uh, Caroline ended up winning, and that was her punishment to us. Was it's fucking chug syrup. Chug the maple like, syrup. That like was clever. Troopers. Like the fact was. she said she thought about it for a while, and mm-hmm. it, I, it's, it took me back. Like I, did, I didn't see it coming. I'm not gonna lie to you. I actually wish she thought about it a little bit less. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I knew, I, I knew two gulps in. I'm like, I'm not finishing this. Yeah, and then I'm over I'm here out. trying to just make content and fucking destroy my life. Dude, I gave it my best <laughs> shot. I tried. It made a good clip. Whatever. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so there is that. You ever had a chirp, chug, chirp, chip? No, but it's <laughs> kind of bothering me just thinking about it, to be honest with we you. Got some, we got some syrup mm-hmm. left. If you I just threw it away. Oh. I just threw it away. We don't Dude, have any. When left. I was is picking it? up, I thought about throwing them. I didn't know if it was a maybe if it something was, we'd want to keep around. Maybe if know. it was pure maple syrup. Okay. Oh, yeah. This stuff is fake as hell. Oh, it's yeah, like super it's fake. It's like, what is that? Corn uh, on Jemima's high fructose corn hey, syrup. That's racist. Oh, yeah. It's pretty much pure high fructose corn it was syrup. Jacks, but. pepper mills. <laughs> dude, I bought that shit for three dollars a bottle. <laughs> you Holy know it's shit, some dude. fake shit. You wow. Let's do, let's cheap. dial it back for a second. You, okay. you guys obviously, we all probably know people who make homemade maple syrup. Mm-hmm. Yes, is isn't it like five gallons for one? pint mm, no you're not even in the ballpark it's like double that at least <laughs> oh really like 10 gallons for what? one it's like 10 to 1 or 15 to 1 i know it's a lot yeah and you like burn it down boil it down mm-hmm. so what's the byproduct well there's basically trees like tree sap Agent orange. out of a maple tree it's just watered down sugar water okay so then you put it all in a big vat and boil out of the water boil the water what out you've so got it's left, water what okay. you've got left is the sugar i thought it was like syrup they used to like dump diesel out because of byproduct of gas, no kerosene or some shit like that. And then all of a sudden they realized they can use it. What if we can use a byproduct of maple syrup? Sorry, I don't understand that redneck talk you got going there. You wouldn't yeah. understand over there, Mister Fucking Polo. Get a goddamn buddy. Jean I can't jacket. even change my own oil. Bud. Put some fucking jean on, and then you can talk to us on this side Put of the some table, buddy. Jean on. Trying to speak roughneck. Yeah, hey, get, I do got some, some jeans on. I'm not gonna lie. I don't got the jean jacket. Jeans? But. What are them Levi's? They they ain't, they ain't no jeans. Hey, they bud, you think I'm gonna come buddy. here in some Levi's? I ain't about that life, you know. You ain't I moved about past them Levi's a decade ago. Dude, I used to rep the Levi's with the little kid ones where it's got that strap that pulls back and you, like, put the button on. You know what I'm talking about? Like, no, I, have no, I actually don't know. It's like know. For, you pull, it's, it's a strap that's inside the jeans. Okay. You pull it. There's a button where you save the spot. Best belt I ever had in my whole life. Built in. I, dude, that's like Velcro shoes but jeans. Yeah, I don't Except think better. that was a normal yeah. thing. No, no dude. Normal thing. I you just, guys are missing out. You had a shitty childhood because those were the jeans i just saw a shitty ad for a shitty belt that only goes around two belt loops what and then it like velcros that tight i'm not gonna lie i've been in a pinch at work when i started losing weight i never wore a belt forever and i started losing weight where i just put a zip tie in between two belt loops that was my fucking that was it worked oh yeah that's a good tip i just do a zip tie between two belt loops i've been a big fan of the shoelace belt yeah i've done the charger cord before Charging for cord? I've been desperate. Mm, I don't know. I don't have the budget for that. Yeah. yeah. We grew up in different tax brackets, buddy. Charging yeah, cords you know. are expensive. Man. <laughs> they are. Or you could just buy. Do you guys do belts? I don't think I've seen a belt from you. I do make belts. I'm yeah? Like, yeah. Fuck. I mean, do you have one on? I do. Can I see it? Yeah. Would that be <laughs> weird? No. Okay. <laughs> show me that belt loop. <laughs> yeah, Damn. Oh, that's oh, actually sick dude. as well. That's actually scribed sick as that's like two belts. I hear stolen. It's that's like two belts sewn on top of each other. It's like a work belt, and then the outer shell is all impressed with this. It's it's like a stamp tool, but it's on a roller, and you feed it through. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Damn. That's sweet. It's art. We actually do a lot of belts. Um, Larry works. So Larry's got ElmaLeather.net that he sells some stuff out of his shop. Then he also works with. Um, Leather Goods Connection, which is a guy out of Georgia. And Larry's 73, and this guy in Georgia is older than Larry. And Larry has made, like, 24,000 belts for that guy in the last, like, 15, 16 years. 24,000? Mm-hmm. Damn. Yeah, he's, he's done a ton of belts. 
Dude, how many cows is that? I don't know what it converts to in cows. <laughs> Holy fuck. Talk about udders, huh? Hey. Well, shit. Well, we'll have Bean Boy look it up on the bathroom break. Yeah, it's fact many, check we'll, that. We'll see how many cows you can get, or how many belts you can get per cow. All right. <laughs> Quite a few. Depends how big a belt you make. We're going to go to bathroom break. We'll it's time for back. a bathroom break. The boys will be right back. All right, boys and girls, let's get serious real quick. This episode is brought to you by Unlimited Masonry. If you need new brick, new stone, brick repair, stone repair, concrete, chimney repair, Bar. give us a call. The fuck was that? <laughs> I, yeah, I shouldn't have done that, but. I just, I, I was gonna say bar repair. Well, he built. They built this <laughs> for us. Oh shit! Well, it's back to the episode. I do like that. Actually, that would be, that would be funny what as the fuck. fuck. Was that? Because I got all the points across. Yeah, you did. I am not a fisherman. I do not fish. I am not passionate about fish. Um, TikTok, the algorithm is extremely precise. They know what you like. They know what people want to see, and they show people what they want to see. Right. Here's one thing that this whole fish scandal of weights in a fish is on every fucking, everybody's TikTok. Viral as fuck. Is it, it, it's on yeah. every one of our TikToks, correct? Mm-hmm. Uh, Audi, is it on your TikTok? The, the fish shit, right? All the time. Yeah, everybody's TikTok. And, and I feel like I have never done anything to provoke any sort of fishing on my TikTok. So it's wild. But it's so huge. It is fucking viral. It's taking over. It, this was no little contest. This wasn't no. something that a small town with a little lake had. This was at Lake Erie. It One was of the like great a lakes, brother. America. It was a big deal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dude, my, my favorite part of the whole video of like what's going on is the guy's standing there with his head down. And there's at least 100 people around, around him yelling, you're a fucking piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck Jump. you. Fuck you. You stole money from me. Yeah. Fucking douchebag. Wild. I'm going to beat your ass. Well, what, from what I've seen from it. So uh, listeners that I honestly don't know who has not seen what's going on right now. Because, uh, I mean, I understand your feeds are catered to you. But there was a fishing competition in Lake Erie. And people cheated on this. And weighted their fish. They put weights inside a fish. They put uh, <laughs> walleye fillets inside a fish. You can you can take it over if you no, want. No, no. I just I just think it, I just think back to when we were talking about frog army. And you said they weighted their fish. They put weights inside of their fish. And then I just yeah. picture this being. Uh, Are you a little sensitive today? <laughs> I am. I am sensitive. I'm very sensitive. And the, the part <laughs> the part that really surprised me is they went through the effort of filleting walleye right and yeah. putting fillets inside these. Fish. Oh, it was wild. That's insanity. You watch um so. So is it a common practice? Like, I guess, are you on fish TikTok? You fish, don't you? Yeah, well, fish I, I do enjoy fishing, and I've been to plenty of fishing contests. And Dang. that this is, like, the worst fucking thing you can do. Is yeah. it common practice to cut the fish open, though, and see what's inside? It's not unheard so of. For, for, like, when you're checking the fish in the tournament to cut them open? Yeah. Is that what? So what they did, what I believe is they were stuffing the shit in, like, the egg sacks. Okay. They weren't like putting it inside the fish's guts. There's like, a, I saw him open up a pouch where all the the weights were falling from, and it's like, it's like a fucking kangaroo pouch type of deal that they were shoving the weights. In. Shit! What orifice do you go through for that, dude? I, it kind of blew my mind when I saw it. To be honest, I didn't know they had that little flap. Wow! I learned a new thing. Absolutely violating these dead fish. It's pretty fucked up. They they did the worst thing you can do. For fisherman's code, and this was a huge purse tournament too. There was a Tens lot of, of money thousands. on the line, and there was, was it a ranger boat on the line? Mm-hmm. Oh, is that what it was? There a was a boat, boat and a cash prize. Mm-hmm. Well, I've seen these people. They were they were wearing their, uh, you know. Sorry, I, I'm not extremely knowledgeable on this, but they were wearing ranger boat fucking like they were sponsored by and them. Ranger shirts. Ranger is is top titty gear. Like oh, yeah. it, it doesn't get mm-hmm. better. Yeah, it's like Sitka to hunting clothes. I guess I don't What's know if Sitka? you hunt. I'm, oh, ju- I'm, just, I'm just fucking brother. with you. Dude, reportedly oh, during an interview right before the tournament started, he said, or one of the guys, we've won three LEWT tournaments in a row. I don't want to sound arrogant or cocky, but I'm confident that we should do well in this championship also because that's just what we do. Winners <laughs> win. I bet. Yeah. He I said bet. winners win. Winners, he said this right before they started. Winners find ways to win. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So then the question is going to be, 
how many tournaments have they cheated on in the past? That's a good question. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure there's a full scale investigation because it's not like it's pennies that they want. No, it's fucking hundreds is of that, thousands. Is that considered a felony? You think? Oh, for sure, it's fraud. It's got yeah, exactly over a thousand dollars of theft, and it's and it's a huge mess with all the who sh- who should have won then. Yeah, the logistics exactly. of figuring all that out How'd and go like back? what tournament's dirty and what's not. So I think of things on a different aspect probably than most people. So what what I think about this is when you watch the videos, everybody is on these people, like just ashamed of them, fucking pissed off at them. Oh, they got a and, it, and it's two people. They're on a team. Yeah. So Holy shit. who do you think this person like has even in their life anymore? Like I feel like their wife. Oh, would be dude, like, I'd be so in, like if shit. that were my dad, I I don't know if I could say I love you anymore. Exactly. So do you think like? Literally, the only people they can hang out with now is that other person in there. You can't love your dad after cheating on hey, that, That's a little intense. Hey. That's a little much. Don't cheat. Yeah, hey, cheaters, true. It's time to start hitchhiking. You're kicked out. Hey, cheaters always win, though, buddy. I mean, so these guys were not cheating by a little bit. Like, I think because they made it so obvious it that was, they were cheating is what ultimately was their downfall. So this guy apparently is one of the first ones to become suspicious of it. Says Jason Fisher, the director of the Lake Erie Walleye Trail, said he first became suspicious of foul play at the tournament when Mr. Runyon and Mr. Kraminski's five fish, which he guessed to weigh not more than four pounds, each came to a total of thirty-four pounds on the scales. So thirty pounds over what a seasoned fisherman would have guessed them to weigh at. It was extreme. Are you serious? Thirty-four pounds on the scale. It's what it said. Oh, they cheated. Like, you can tell by looking at the fish and what it weighed in. It was just stupid. They, I mean, I don't know if he was drunk or high or what he was doing, but he should have known. Everybody knew. He it said, was extremely I, obvious. Yeah. He said, I thought there's just no way, he told CNN. I could also hear the crowd grumbling, like, no way. There's no way. I physically felt the fish. I could feel hard objects inside the fish. I remember that from the video, too. He's just like, there's no way. There's no way. My fish were this. There's no way. Yeah, and uh, you can tell in the video that even the fishermen that cheated, I feel like you could tell on their face, they're like, we just, we just fucked up. Oh, like We yeah, did dude. way too much. They're like, yeah. He's we, not trying to argue. No. Like, oh, I keep thinking, I know there's two guys, but there's one guy you can really tell is involved in all the, the videos. The main person. Because yeah. his head is down the whole time. Yeah, he knew right away, even when they took the photos. And, and the announcer's like, yeah, well, that's our winner. There's, I feel like there's no way you can beat that. It's like, yeah, the, because yeah, it, was, it was obviously fucking so rigged. The would-be winners were set to take home a $28,760 grand prize. Holy that's shit. a lot of money to just a be stuffing your fish full of these weights. What's the average income of the United States? Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's probably, what, 50 60? Maybe no, no, dude, it's got to so. be less than that. 30, 28. Dude, Pine so, County is like 20. So literally that. an average income for a whole year was what this was on the line. And these people just 31 grand robbed it. 31,000. 31, so literally the app, like damn close to the average income. Of, it's of fucked up, in the dude. States. Like I actually, this is one of the few things I see that get me going. If you were in a situation where it was like a life changing amount of money on the line, Mm-hmm. would you kind of push the line in your favor if it was a unnoticeable amount? <clears throat> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great answer. That's exactly where I wanted to go with that. <laughs> if well, I knew I wasn't going to get caught, of course. But nobody ever knows. You don't know 100%. That's, that's the trick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's always a possibility. So what is the biggest you've ever cheated in your life? Oh, oh fuck, that's a dude. I've one. definitely cheated before. Yeah. Like, Fuck! I wish that something was right off the top oh, of my dude. head. Yeah, here's the problem. I asked the qu- I asked the question, and I don't even think I have anything. I got a good one. <laughs> I got a good one. While you're thinking of that, so okay. my what my now wife actually and I had the same college class, college math class in high school. Okay, and uh, I copied off of every single one of her homework for every single one of her pieces of homework for the entire year. I don't think I had one original math problem that I did that wasn't in class, and. At the end of the year, just because my test scores were different than hers, I ended up passing with a B, and she ended up failing with a D. Holy <laughs> shit. We had the exact same papers and everything. Does she know about this? Oh, yeah. How pissed was she? Sometimes she would go turn it in for me. <laughs> 
so like she would copy down some of it. Some of it was in her handwriting. Wow. Still failed, huh? Still, she still failed. She Oof. didn't get college math credit. Bad. Yeah, so I would say that's probably my biggest scandal. I can only think of examples in high school, cheating on homework or using somebody else's paper. Right. I can't think of anything like. That's harmless. Like, like I've never golfed a golf tournament and cheated on my strokes. Yep. I don't know. Yeah. I can't think of any real world examples because homework, like I stole, I stole somebody else's book report, changed a few things, yeah. edited it as my own. But I like, think the older you get to, the more you realize, like, is this even worth it? Do I care enough? about yeah. this well the to, shame just like with yeah, these guys right. the shame of getting caught is enough for me to be like all right I'm these good. people lives are over right like literally everybody most of the people in the fucking world know who these fisher fishermen are that don't right. even have anything to do with fish not only that but maybe they're going to jail now <laughs> i mean yeah. like i mean that's might. a real possibility there they was might. 30 grand on the line yeah. almost well those people i i thought everybody else in the tournament i was ready there was a little bit of clickbait. I was actually a little bit of mad. I was kind of mad because they're like, oh, yeah, the whole wish, uh, the whole fish weigh in and the brawl. That's what, what some of the captions were. Oh. I stuck in it for a fucking three minute video. Thinking that they're going to be was, fighting? Yeah, I thought there was going to be a fight. Like, and shit got intense. Like, it was electric. If you watched when they cut them open, everybody was quiet in the crowd. And the uh, judge or whatever cuts the fish open. Holds it up. We got weights and fish. And the whole fucking crowd just erupts. Just, just erupts like, fucking fuck piece of shit. shit. Just, <laughs> just fucking pissed. I would and love it, to be in that mob, It dude. was electric. And it, those weights were yeah. just falling, flying out. Mm -hmm. They're like ball bearings. Like, dang. He was throwing them in that plastic crate, and they're yeah. like bouncing out. Just weight after weight after weight. Dang. It was high-ass energy. If I, As long as I'm not the person that cheated, which I never would be, that would have been fun as fuck to be in. Like, just to be in that mob, just harassing this person would have been Dude, a Dude, mo mob mentality gets me going. Oh, Like, yeah. I'm definitely you one of what? those people. I thought of something. Yeah. So oh, you cheated. This coming year is the 20th annual Rough Fish Contest in Nelson, Wisconsin. So it's like sheephead and yep. catfish carp. And, and carp and all your rough fish. And the first year they had it, we all contributed to the same bucket of fish. And we took first, and we just split up the cash <gasps> among us. Oh, real! Mm -hmm. That was 19 oh, years ago. It's actually first a good annual. hustle. And it hey. was all just like sheephead fishing. So we had like a whole garbage can full of sheephead fish. We were all just doing it for fun. Right. It was a local family that was doing the whole thing for a charity donation, which they continue to do. This coming year is going to be the 20th year, and we're trying to get Dirty Prescott kids to perform at it. Okay, where's that um, at? That's in Nelson, Wisconsin. Nelson, Wisconsin. So it's Mississippi River backwaters fishing anywhere on the Mississippi because there's no lake next to Nelson. It's the Mississippi River. Okay. And it's an import the, the fishing first river. annual year, Damn. we fleeced them. Oh, Damn. What, was, what was the purse? I don't remember. It was like a hundred bucks or something. We oh, split okay. up a small amount and then we spent yeah. all that on like the silent auction anyways, you know, but, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, we did it. That was, that was a fishing contest cheat that that's like a core memory that I hadn't even thought of for 19 years. We unlocked that for you and I'm actually mm -hmm. happy. And here's the deal. What's the state of judification? Isn't it like 15 years or whatever? What's the, uh, not state of judification. What's the word for when you can't be prosecuted? Statute of limitations. Statute of limitations. I think it's seven years. Seven? So we're good, dog. 19 years. Let's go. So <laughs> I, I actually, so yesterday I got accused of putting Vaseline on someone's door handles and on someone's windshield wipers. Yesterday? Which yeah, someone accused me of doing it. Not yesterday, <laughs> but yesterday he accused me. Is this ninth grade? That's so this, I told him, I was like, that wasn't me. That's fucking hilarious. But then we started talking about other dumb shit we did, like pumpkin smashing mailbox, this or that. So shitting on cars. Do you guys do you guys have any good vandalism stories by chance? Oh, shitting on cars. I uh, I in college I was in a bad point. I vandalized <laughs> a lot of vehicles. Like it was I, bad. <laughs> um, I, I have a lot through, of video documentation. Of yes, this. you do. That I really hope I never piss you off in my life. <laughs> I think, like, I think a big reason why I'm like, hey, make sure, make sure Cody's happy. Speaking of Leahy, actually, I don't oh, know if Lord. you know this, but I'm an honorary trailer park boy. I have a certificate from him and everything. You are. He took a oh. body shot off of me two weeks before he died. Congratulations. That's I've legendary. That, that's that's pretty cool. It I was seen him three sweet. weeks before he died, and he was in great health. But then he took a body shot off him, and then it was down. Everything changed. It went yeah. downhill. I've seen what's in that guy's belly button. 
I saw their Christmas special at the Orpheum Theater in Minneapolis. What? Oh, dude. I'm pretty sure I passed out for like a third of it because I was hammering. <laughs> was it not incredible though? It was. It was, it was I, awesome. I do want to touch. Was it just? Uh, was Had it just Leahy Orpheum. and? No, it was the full cast. It was a full thing. See, the Orpheum is a the, big deal. Or the, the major, Orpheum is like a really nice theater. The major members. Okay. See, I only see Leahy and Randy. That's mm. all I got. Yeah. Is that all you got? Was yeah. Leahy and Randy? They were, they were doing their little like stand up yeah. tour. It was actually routine. really funny. So a massive radio station here in Minnesota is 93X. And, it was, and Leahy came on the 93X Half-Ass Morning Show and they were giving away tickets. Okay. And I thought this was funny because I fucking love Trailer Park Boys. I was just obsessed with them. And I messaged them the next morning at like 4 a.m. And I'm like, "What are you guys giving away tickets again? Like I want to win tickets today f- for that. And they just texted me back. They're like, we'll call you later. <laughs> that's, right. that's all they said. And they Deal. just called me later. They called me five times because my phone wasn't working. My phone wasn't working. And it was, um, God, Ross. It was Ross. He called me five times trying to get a hold of me. My phone was not going through. And they gave me the tickets. I'm like, damn, apparently nobody wants these fucking tickets. <laughs> but I had a blast. Me and Darwin went to it. It was awesome. They're just praying someone will pick up and <laughs> yeah. take the ticket. It was actually kind of sad, but I uh, I really enjoyed it. I loved it. No, they were, the fe- they were feeding off of your enthusiasm. Oh. And they knew you were the right person oh, to have dude. them. Yeah. And I had a blast. And it was like a Tuesday night too. It was like my first time I've ever gone to uh, any sort of event on a work night because I don't Ooh. do that. And it was at... It was in Minneapolis. Like, oh. I didn't get home till fucking 1 a.m. Like, controversial, you know? <laughs> yeah. Awesome, but yeah, it was fun. It was it was a blast. I had a great time seeing Leahy right before Cody killed him. And it was a gr- <laughs> good time. Great time. Yeah. Uh, th- I actually got, like, they kind of flamed me in front of the whole crowd of people where I was at. I, was, I saw them up at Shotgun Sally's in Grand Forks, North Dakota. And um, they pulled me up on stage. They're like, we need someone from the crowd, whatever, for this demonstration. Whole, everyone raises their hand and I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm not going to get picked. Sure as shit. Pull me right up on stage. Make me take my shirt off in front of, I don't know, there's probably 500 people there and make me lay down on this table. They did a body shot off of me. They like made me answer these questions that made me look like an idiot on stage. And <laughs> yeah, it was pretty good. It was good. I got a certificate. I'm an, I'm an honorary trailer park boy. That's awesome. I didn't know that was such a thing. Well, I mean, I would be proud of that. It's kind of a novelty thing. The I problem is that, real or not. No, is it though? <laughs> I would be proud. I'll for, I'll for, I'm going to frame it. That's actually his greatest achievement in life. <laughs> it really is. He has it framed. Yeah. It's, um, why it's is not it, framed yet. Why is it not hung up in here? That's he, such uh, a good that's point. That's a very good I point. I think of that. It was on yeah. my fridge. See, we How about CPS we take away around. We take away that fucking diploma in the other room? Take that diploma down. No. Honorary fucking trailer oh, he park. He likes that. That piece of paper. That piece of paper is worth more to me. The trailer park certificate. I'll just replace the diploma with the trailer park. Yes, we, we have room for both. Yes, absolutely. There's always room for more. Okay. Tyler, we you give me say. just insane Jacob from Trailer Park Boys vibes. Have you officially met Sam? Today was the no, first this is day. The first time. First time. So, okay. So, Sam, can we shut Sam's mic off, actually? Might as well. <laughs> no. What, so, what is your uh, thoughts on Sam? <laughs> oh, you <laughs> fucking piece of shit. Yeah, shut just, his mic Should we just pretend like he's not here? Yeah, we yeah, can do that. Might as well. I can do that. I think he's all right. He's all right. Yeah, maybe I like, like... I like that he actually fishes. Yeah, <laughs> okay. All right. I'm a Packers fan, too, if oh. that means anything. Straight oh. to the heart. Straight to the heart. Go Pack Go, baby. I uh, I feel like I'm controversial in the fact that I, I don't really care about sports. It's See, weird. See, you tried to turn him against me, and we found yeah. out you're the fucking And now loser. we're on me. We're like, hey, I don't fish. I don't <laughs> fucking care about football. <laughs> I can change my oil in five seconds, though. Hey, we're over here in jeans, buddy. We're over here in denim, full jacket. You're mm-hmm. a polo over here, man. Hey, oh, take sure your roll for orange. He did sure die enough. of cardiac arrest. I just made this shirt today. Heart attack. You, what? Well, the patch. I sold, oh, okay. I sold the patch on today. Get the... Drink Point Beer. Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah. Got Where do you get your patches at? I got an incredible stash of patches from an online auction that I got like an ad for. Yep. And I spent like 125 Dude. bucks for just this crazy stash of like 30 some big vintage back patches. Oh, that's And sweet. over 100 smalls. So I think it was, it might have been before we had you on last time. But I, I had a problem where I'd get really fucked up and I'd buy shit online. <laughs> Like mm. I, I loved buying shit online. <laughs> yeah. I bought one. I bought. I think it was eighty hats from New York, three hundred and twenty dollars okay. for fucking for for old trucker hats from New York. It was like one stash of hats. One stash of hats, massive collection, eighty of them. Paid three hundred and twenty dollars for them. 
I woke up in the morning. I was like, holy shit. But here's the deal. I got them. They're incredible. I got a, really? uh, yeah, really good. Really good. I got an 89 Indy 500 silk hat. Like, oh. beautiful. It doesn't, it doesn't go big enough to fit my head. But honestly, I'm happy about it because it's a wall hanger. Mm. I think, you know, we, we talked about last episode. So, y- you collect old hats, correct? I'm a hat guy, yeah. Okay, so let's just put these people out of it. Okay, so I want to start this conversation right these now. These people? Yeah, yeah, you people. So, last episode, we talked about Pioneer. You like... You like like seed farmer hats, yeah. Correct. Okay, so I actually brought this one because I had a stash. I got you a pioneer farmer's hat. Oh wow! Right here. Are, do you want to accept this? I do. Okay, or else I'll keep it. What if he said no? no. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Honestly, I'll take it. Nah. I like, but I nah, got you more, <laughs> more of a decal <laughs> guy. You, yeah, I, yeah. I don't like that kind of seed. Yeah, the <laughs> corn fucking sucks. No, I'm a pioneer man. <laughs> yeah, so I brought that to you. It's kind of a little dirty, but I no, got a. Uh, this is from. Well, I talked about Mervy Evan King. He gave me a lot of hats, and it was incredible. But uh, yeah, I wanted to. I looked through it. I'm like, what can I give give you today that I think you would appreciate? Oh, and yeah. I I know uh, Pioneer. We talked about it before, but it is. This is what I love. Just shut up. Quit fucking I'm making not saying anything. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I love hats, and uh, this is. <laughs> I wanted to give that to you, buddy. Hell oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that looks Hell actually yeah. really good. That fits you really good, too. Yeah, because that's, that's what old Hell trucker yeah. hats do. So I have a massive, I have a weird amount of hobbies. Hell okay? yeah. And um, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> You have a weird amount of hobbies. I was recently talking, <laughs> I was recently expressing my feelings about like hobbies and shit. Yes. And I felt really weird because I got super in depth about how old hats nothing fits better than an old hat. And that, that yes. might be me. That might old be reliable. That might be my head. But do you feel the same way I do that? There's nothing better than an, and a genuine old hat from like the eighties, nineties. They do have a superior fit. They just feel amazing. There's n- I feel oh, yeah. like there's nothing. And I know you, like the squirter hat is incredible. What, where do you get this one? This is one of mine from repcps.com. Repcps.com. That's right. That's right. Yes. So you can go there. Is our is our discount code still alive? <laughs> it is actually. I just got an yeah. email the other day and someone bought something. Oh yeah. So use uh, yeah. promo code on tap. I do put it in the in the uh, metadata of all of our show notes still. Yeah. If it, since episode what would have been 66, 64, yeah. whenever last time you were on. So mm-hmm. if uh, if they s- listen on Spotify or iTunes, if they click on like the show notes or whatever, it's still <laughs> rep CPS discount code on tap. 10% off. So I do really like that. I think that that, honestly, this hat here is probably the one of the most genuine old style hats. Mm-hmm. It's literally called the classics. Yep. That's, the classics. That's like, why. And the big ass rope, big fucking trucker hat. It is the best fitting hat I think there is. And I love just the slight bend. I call it the farmer's bend. Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. There, there's, I guess that's how I grew up. My, my grandpa was a farmer. And that, that was where it started. It started with a pioneer hat just like that, but I had side flaps. It oh, fucking yeah. folded down. I got I got one for this winter. It's incredible. All right? It's amazing. But hey. My family have been farming since fucking 1820. They're over here like, we're so happy for you, man, but we do not care. No, they don't care at all. Oh, I care. I care. I'm uh, in, completely invested. I, I love fine. this. All right, on to the next So topic. I have a question for CPS <laughs> Day. As... So we were we were talking about how we have a discount code, um, because we like we like your merch. We like to push it. I have noticed on TikTok and other platforms, you have a few other creator friends like Wisco Dive Bars, DPK, Joey Exotic, um, Whiskey Biz. So like, how how did you make all yeah. your connections? Just uh, literally just from people reaching out or from digital content and. A lot of times people were just my customers and they're, they're stoked to wear it on a, on a podcast yeah. or, or on a TikTok, and I'll reach out to them. It's, it's, it's just people I work with mostly, you know, when I do these live vendor events, most of the time I know a bartender that knew a bar owner that got me into a place or I had a, I got friends that have a, the, the hop and barrel brewery in Hudson and they had a new location open up. So I went there like. I'm working with people that I'm networking with physically. Um, and that's usually how one thing leads to another with with the discount codes. Yeah. Um, Relations and stuff met online. But it's literally like you you never know. There's this 
there's this righteous dude named Chum Photos that he's a traveling photographer, does a lot of model photography, and he also works with Jelly Roll. And nice. now my hats have been showing up on Bunny's TikToks. And no all shit. Damn. One, one, of the, one of the hairstylists that they work with just sent me a video from backstage, and they're in Louisville, and Jelly Roll brought, like, a little girl up on stage to sing. Her dad's wearing a Show Me That Butthole hat. So you're, that's that's awesome. so, so you're, Sweet. you're telling me, roundabout way, you have a connection to Jelly Roll? Yes. That is fucking incredible. It is. I, he is blowing up. Becoming, he's going to be huge. Dude, I, mean, I swear I swear to God, my mom is a mid fifty. She's going to hate I said mid-50s. Early 50-year-old <laughs> woman. <laughs> she, she's been a teacher her whole life, just a saint. She tells me her favorite artist right now is Jelly Roll. Yeah. Son of a Sinner. That's, that's yeah. her favorite song. I couldn't yeah. fucking believe it, my, dude. Mm-hmm. My cousin, I, l- I live with my cousin right now because I'm t- uh, currently homeless. And I, uh, she was like, "Oh, you got to hear the song." She plays it. I'm like, "Is this fucking Jelly Roll?" She's like, "What? I don't, I don't know." And she looks and she's like, "Yeah, it's Jelly Roll." I'm like, "This guy's fucking incredible." I'm like, "You got to listen to everything he does." I've been yeah. good so shit. Back in the day, I think it was like so 2008. He used to have a lot of songs with Lil White. Lil White, yes, yeah. Oxycontin, Lil White. Do you know Oxycontin by Lil White? No, Oxycontin, yeah. Xanax, Bob, Perkis, Perkis Sets, Sets, and Laura, Laura Tev. Tev. I don't want to go into it because I could sing the whole entire song. Yeah, but uh. He did a he did an album with him and stuff way back in the day. And have you heard? Have you listened to any of his podcasts with Jelly Roll? Like his backstory and everything. Oh, I haven't. it's incredible. I I would highly recommend Theo Vaughn. Uh, last this past weekend, it was yeah. called with Theo Vaughn with Jelly Roll. Incredible. His backstory okay. and everything is amazing. Yeah, cool shit. It's amazing. He he started in prison. He's been in and out of prison forever. <laughs> that was actually and it's great. Cool shit. Yeah, I I, I have listened to it. Actually. No, I love Jelly Roll. Yeah. So this, how about you do your research, and listen to that episode? There's something about his music that must just radiate to everybody. Yeah, yeah. he spans. It's just like the the uh, genuine mm-hmm. that too. aspect yeah. where it's Very like genuine. okay, this is real. He's just landing it all He's out real there. Guy. He doesn't care what you think. And yeah, that, and well, then people can feel that. And you talked about Bunny. I mean, she's a fucking smoke show. Mm-hmm. And everybody always says like, like, oh, she's in it for the clout. She's in it for this. Like. He met her when he was nothing, and she, like, helped him through everything. These people, yeah, these people are bigger than, oh, they're just in it for this or that. Yeah, yeah. bigger than all of You don't, you don't get to that. this point without it, years of struggle. No, exactly. it's so disrespectful. I, right. I hate seeing that shit. You know, clout chasers, and when they, they accuse them of that when they don't know backstories and stuff. Jelly Roll's incredible. That's where I want to go with that. I, I love his backstory. He's a great oh, yeah. guy. You know what else Love to meet him one day. On tapping the sticks, October fifteenth. <laughs> yes. This Saturday coming up, you can pre-order tickets on our website. Dave will be there. Travis is performing. DBK. On tap with the boys dot com. On tap with the boys. I can't believe com. we're here. I can't believe we're here. It's it's literally it's this a one Saturday. week away. This is going to be the biggest event. Fuck the Pine County Fair. That's nothing compared to what on tapping the sticks is going to be. This will be. I will say right now, this will be. The best thing Pond City's ever seen. It it is, bro. I was trying to think. I was, I was yeah. talking to my to my that boss about this right this now. week. There is no other event Pine City has ever thrown in my lifetime that will compare to this. Okay, Nothing. so here's the deal: that meth head did arson down the street. That was pretty sweet. That was awesome. That was that cool. was really fucking cool. So we have to top that. And Afro Man did play at Froggies once. Fuck, twice. Three times. Three, Three times? times? Three? Dude, he loves Froggies. Shit. <laughs> done. I wonder if we could get him for next year. I think oh, we probably could. Dude. I think we probably could. And that would be incredible. He's still putting out a lot of good music. He, he is. Has like a, he has like a gospel record. Like yeah. Afro Man's pumping out good music. He's probably. actually an absolute multi-tool of a musician. He is. I just listened to Because I Got High on the way here today. All-time favorite. What were oh, you yeah. doing? Getting high. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I literally was. <laughs> Fucking right. Colt 45. I know every word. Oh, dude. That's pretty much it. But I still Classic. love Afro, man. Absolute banger. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let's wrap this thing up. Dave, where can the people find you? What's your socials? What's C- the handles? Look up CPS Dave, and you will find me on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok, also Rep CPS is my website, repcps.com. That's also the public Snapchat. That's the Instagram. That's the Facebook. I'm everywhere. Listen listen to Dave's playlist on Spotify. I it's listened, incredible. I so listened good. to your first interview. I went and looked. There's some bangers. Yeah, CPS the Lady Dave. Bangers CPS playlist. Dave on Spotify and Apple Music. I've got a bunch of public playlists. And you can also find him at Alma Leather. 
at Alma Leather in Alma, Wisconsin. Alma, Wisconsin. It's incredible. Watch this guy's work. Hell and you yeah. can find us everywhere. 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 So on YouTube, it's, <laughs> it is on tap there media. We go. Yep. If you ask Alexa to look up on tap with the boys, it will not come up. It is on tap media. Otherwise, we I'm pretty sure everything that. else is on tap with the boys. Yeah. So, and obviously the easiest way that we can grow, if you enjoyed this episode, is that you share it with your friends and tell everybody about us. That's the best way that we can grow and the easiest way we can do it if you enjoyed this. And also, if you enjoyed this, you can see us this Saturday, October 15th. Also, uh, happy birthday, six. Justin Gamick. Uh, January 8th. No free shout Tenth. Outs. Tenth. Thanks for listening to On Tap with 10th. the Boys. Be sure to follow us on social media and stay updated. Tune in next week for another episode about Tyler's problems. Did you just give a what do you mean? Did you just give a shout out for a birthday three months away? I think hey, you did. January tenth. Shout out, Justin. <laughs> for, for three months, you're like, hey, I hey, just want to make out. sure that this I guy hope, knows. I hope you're listening. Hit me up if you heard this. Hey, Bean Boy, do you want to give a little piece in the camera?